Maybe you're like me and tend to have a go-to liquor or a drink that you always order whenever you go to the bar. Is it just me? Well today, I wanna to help you switch things up. Today we are continuing our holiday liquor series where I teach you the basics of learning about liquor. So the different ins and outs of how liquors are made, how to choose a good bottle you know you'll enjoy drinking, and how to use different liquors in mixed drinks. If you're new to this series, last week we talked about tequila, so make sure that you check that video out. And then coming up in the next couple weeks, we'll be chatting about rum and gin. So if you're not already subscribed, make sure to click the subscribe button so you can follow along and learn lots of fun things. Today's video is going to be your intro guide to whiskey. Now, I have to give a disclaimer and say I am not an expert in whiskey. In fact, the more and more I continue to learn about it, the more and more questions I seem to have. So if you're looking for something a little bit more advanced, this probably isn't the video for you. But if you're kind of new to whiskey or looking to try out some different liquors to taste, and add to your repertoire, this is the video for you. So this whiskey video is gonna be all about kind of the beginner's guide to understanding the different terms. There's a lot of different whiskey specific terms kind of floating out there. And I'm hoping that after this video, you'll be able to understand those as well as understand how to choose a good bottle for your personal taste preference. So starting out, I want to first lay some groundwork so that way you can understand as we get into discussing the different types of whiskey, you can understand a little bit better what I'm actually talking about. So first things first, we need to talk about the basics. Now every whiskey is going to taste a little bit different and the reason for that is three main things. First off, um, we have to determine where it's made. So that's gonna make a big influence on the taste. Second, what it's made of. And then third, obviously what it tastes like. Now let's break each of those down a little bit more. So when we talk about where whiskeys are made, this is gonna be important because typically when you go into a liquor store, they categorize the whiskeys by where they're made. So popular locations include Scotland, which will be your typical scotch, American whiskey, Canadian whiskey, Irish whiskey, Japanese whiskey. Those are kind of your top main ones. Now something interesting about where whiskeys are made is also the spelling of whiskey. If you've done any research at all, you've probably noticed that whiskey can be spelled with or without the E at the end. Now if it's made in the United States or in Ireland, they tend to keep the E at the end. And if it's made in any of the other locations, they tend to spell it without the E. So that may clear up any confusion, especially if you take a peek at my blog post, which I'll link below and it'll have a recap of everything we talked about today. I use the different spellings depending on which kind of whiskey I'm talking about from each location. Now, when we're talking about what whiskey is made from, we're referring to the mash bill. And if you've never heard of this before, the mash is the different grains that are used to make the whiskey meaning corn, rye, barley, or wheat grains. Now, depending on the type of bourbon, the mash bill requirements by law to make it that specific product are going to be very specific. So for example, if you're talking about a rye whiskey, by law, 51% of the mash has to be rye grains. Now, the rye whiskey is just one example, but really what it comes down to is if the specific mash bills are not followed by law, then a distiller can't legally put a specific name on the bottle. So that's why that's important, and I think you'll find that later in the video, this will come up again. So I wanna make sure that you understand what mash bill means. The mash bill also plays a role in the end product's taste, and that's because the different grains that are used in the mash will reflect how it tastes. For example, rye tends to be a spicier grain as opposed to when they use corn, corn tends to make a sweeter whiskey. So that's how that plays into all of the bottles that we're gonna talk about today. A couple other glossary terms to know before we really get into the meat of this video are two things. First off, when you hear the word single, what that means is that the mash is coming from a single distiller. And then if you hear the word malt, what that means is it is from 100% malted barley. 
So keep that in mind as we get into the rest of the video. All right, now there are tons of different varieties and variations of whiskey around the world. So rather than trying to wrap our heads around all of those, today we're gonna focus on my top ones that I think you should know about if you're starting to discover different whiskeys. So starting out with the whiskeys that you need to know, we're gonna first jump into American whiskey. And something we've all probably heard of and maybe even tried is a bourbon. Now by law, bourbon is required to be made in the US in order to be classified as a bourbon. Maybe some of you have heard that bourbon is required to be made in Kentucky. That is not true, that is not a fact. The requirement states that it has to be made specifically in the United States. When we talk about how bourbon is made, the mash bill is made up of a minimum of 51% corn. Now in terms of aging, there's no requirements as to how long bourbon has to be aged. Rather, the requirement comes in that um, new, not never before used, charred oak barrels have to be what the bourbon is aged in. Now, as you get into different kind of subtypes of bourbon, there's gonna be different rules and requirements, but that's just kind of your generic bourbon. As you get more specifics, you may have heard of straight bourbon. For example, if you drink a straight bourbon, that is by law required to age for a minimum of two years. So it really just kind of depends on what type of specific bourbon that you're looking for and looking at when you go shopping. Now in terms of taste, bourbon has kind of a smoky yet smooth taste. Now like I mentioned earlier, corn tends to be on the sweeter side of things. So it kind of has that nice smooth sweet taste, but then from the oak barrels, a little bit of smokiness is kind of infused in the whiskey. Now, if you check out my blog post, which I'll link below, I actually made a drink. It is a bourbon whiskey slushy, and it has apple cider and ginger beer in it. And this is my take on how I wanna use bourbon in my cocktail. Now, I think bourbon is one of those choices that if you've never drank whiskey before, it would be a good place to start because it doesn't have such a rich, smoky, spicy taste that other whiskeys have. So this could be a good place to start if you wanna try something new. Now another common whiskey that is both an American whiskey and a Canadian whiskey is rye. Now rye whiskey is very similar to the distillation process of bourbon. The only difference is that the mash bill is made up of 51% rye rather than 51% corn. Now when it comes to drinking rye, this is probably one that is only for people who like a really unique taste. It tends to be on the spicier, peppery side because rye has such a unique, strong taste. Now, if you've never drank whiskey before, but think you might like this flavor, go ahead and give it a try. Um, if not, not sure that this is quite the one to start with, maybe start with bourbon first. Next up, we are jumping into the world of Scotch whiskey. Now, maybe it's just me, but for whatever reason, whenever I hear the word scotch, I always think of an old man sitting in his leather chair by the fire holding a nice glass of scotch. Now, this stereotype is not at all true. Anybody can drink scotch. I feel like it gets a bad name and people think that they have to know a lot about scotch before they can start tasting it. And that's not at all true. Scotch does tend to be a little bit more complicated when it comes to the distillation process as well as when it comes to picking out a bottle. And I think that comes down to the fact that there's so many different options. So first off, when you're talking about a bottle of scotch, as you may have guessed from the name, it's coming from Scotland. There's five main regions in Scotland that produce scotch. In terms of what scotch is made from, there are a few options. It can be made from malt, from grains, and then from a blend. Now, like I mentioned, there's a lot of different types, so hopefully I can break this down in an easy manner for you. When we talk about scotch, there can be a single malt, which like we discussed earlier, single means it's from one distillery and malt means it's from 100% barley malt. You can also have a grain variety and this can either be a single grain or a blend of different grains. So a blend of corn, rye, wheat, and then finally you can have blended whiskeys, which are just kind of a mix of different types of all the grains that we've talked about. 
When it comes to taste, because scotch is required to be aged for a minimum of three years, it's going to taste a bit more smoky and have a deeper flavor than other types of whiskey. But when you really start to break down what does this specific bottle of scotch taste like, it tends to be a little bit confusing because there's so many different options. So here's a few pieces of advice. First off, a single malt or single grain is going to cost you a little bit more because it is more expensive to make. So if you're new to whiskeys, probably start with a blended scotch. And basically this is going to allow you to spend less on a bottle and also have kind of a variety of tastes rather than one predominant flavor. So when you're at the store and you're looking at a bottle of scotch, Try to browse the label and see if there are any flavor notes or specific answers that they give you on the label. Sometimes the bottle will allude to a specific taste or flavor that will be predominant in the bottle. Other times it may not, so I would suggest starting out by looking at the bottles that have that noted on the label so you can start to see and explore which grain tastes you prefer. So you can start to explore what different kinds of grains taste like and which one you prefer for your palate. Now next up we have Irish whiskey, which as you may guess from the name is made in Ireland. Now Irish whiskey is made up of some malted barley as well as other unmalted grains. Unlike scotch, however, most of Irish whiskey is made more often of the unmalted grains. Now there's four main types of Irish whiskey, malt, pot still, grains, and blended. And similar to what we talked about with scotch, there's different requirements as far as the mash blend for all four of those different types of Irish whiskeys. So rather than bore you with those numbers, I'm gonna again suggest that when you're at the store, you kind of take a peek at the bottle and see what flavor notes and flavor profiles are written on the label. Part of the intimidating thing about choosing a bottle of liquor is that so many of the requirements are so difficult to understand. And really, it's kind of a cool fact to know how the bottle is made, but it's not super, super important to get down to the specific numbers and details of each mash bill. Really for you, what you care about is the specific taste and the flavors that you're gonna notice when you're drinking it. So pay more attention to that and focus less on the specific numbers and requirements for all the mash bills when they're being distilled. As for the taste of Irish whiskey, oftentimes Irish whiskey is distilled more, sometimes up to three times. So this tends to give it a lighter, smoother taste than other whiskeys. Some people also say that it kind of gives off a vanilla taste. Now the final whiskey that we're gonna talk about today is Japanese whiskey. Now you'd think from the name that it was from Japan, but that's not necessarily the case. It does not have to be from Japan. In fact, a lot of Japanese whiskey has different whiskeys either from or mixed in with imported whiskeys from different countries. The fact of the matter is with Japanese whiskey is that there's not a whole lot of rules, regulations, and requirements. So when it comes to Japanese whiskey, there's not an end all be all as far as taste or things that you're always gonna find in every single bottle. Because of the unique creative process that goes into Japanese whiskey due to the lack of restrictions, these bottles tend to be a bit more expensive. And it's kind of hard to pinpoint the different tastes because each bottle is so different. So my suggestion because of this is to do some research before you go to buy a bottle of Japanese whiskey. Just so you know, they also tend to be a little bit more expensive, so these bottles are probably best to just sip. Now, probably the main reason why you clicked on this video is because you want to learn how to pick out a bottle of whiskey that you know you're gonna love and want to drink. So when you're first starting out in your whiskey journey, don't feel pressure of having to drink a specific type of whiskey or a certain flavor. You can choose what you think you're gonna like. And forget what all of the whiskey connoisseurs say. Even if it's an expensive bottle, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna like it and wanna drink it. So when you're at the liquor store and you're going to pick out a bottle of whiskey, here are a few things to remember. First off, always read the label to see if any flavor profiles or taste notes are labeled on the bottle. Second, if you are looking for a mixed drink whiskey, 
try looking for a blended whiskey. These are gonna be cheaper first off and they're kind of a good place to start and they will mix well with the different add-ins for your cocktail. Third, if you're looking for a whiskey to sip, I would suggest going with a single malt or trying out maybe a more expensive Japanese whiskey. And finally, I always like to remind people there's no pressure to buy an expensive bottle. If you go to a liquor store like Total Wine, they always have the little mini bottles and oftentimes you can find something that you're wanting to try in those to start out rather than purchasing the whole bottle. And just remember that everybody has different tastes and preferences, so what your friend may like, you may hate. So there's no pressure to find an exact bottle that everybody loves that probably doesn't exist since we all have different tastes. So just pick something that you like and you're gonna enjoy. I hope you found today's video helpful and useful in beginning your whiskey journey. Like I mentioned, there are a lot of nuances to whiskey, so there's lots of different other facts and things you can learn if you wanna continue your journey. I'll link some of my favorite resources that I've found in my blog post below. And if you have anything to add to this conversation, I would love to hear it. Because there's so many nuances, it does get confusing and anybody that can help clarify or add to this conversation, I would love to hear. Make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss the other Liquor 101 videos that we have coming out in the next couple weeks, and I will see you then.